Hello, this is Renee from Martha and Meat Crafts, and today we're going to learn to make a cute little bookmark. It's done with a new stitch to you, I'm thinking, and it's called the Star Stitch, and it's very simple, but it really makes a stitch that looks complex and interesting. People won't be believe that you're beginners. We're going to put a tassel on it and some beads and this little bookmark will work up in no time at all but it looks like a very complicated task that you'll accomplish very quickly now i'm assuming a lot of you are beginners that's who i'm aiming for but this bookmark would be great for anybody you just might want to breeze past some of these basic elementary foundational um, things that we're going to be talking about first. So just skip ahead till we get to the actual stitching if you'd like. So we're going to start with yarn of course and today I'm using Lion Brand 24-7 cotton yarn because it's I find it's easy for beginners it doesn't unravel so much. And this calls for a four millimeter crochet hook so that's what I have here, a four millimeter crochet hook. I've selected two beads and I didn't have a size on the beads I ordered. It just called them pony beads or bracelet beads. And they've got a nice big hole and it's gonna work nice for this. It comes, it's like a rainbow color assortment that I've done this in. And you can find this on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description below. We also need a tapestry needle with a large eye so that we can thread our yarn through and finish this off. We will need a scissor and just to clip our ends and very basic supplies and we're ready to go. Also, the uh, I, I only have about six yards here of leftover yarn and this is gonna be plenty for this cute little bookmark the star stitch bookmark so for you ranked beginners you need to know how to hold your crochet hook first so we'll lay our yarn down pick up our crochet hook and there's two ways to hold the crochet hook that you will just select the one that you find the most comfortable the easiest so the one I use is the knife method and you just hold it like you're holding a knife uh, and to cut your meat as you're eating dinner. And th in this method, you put your palm over the shaft of the crochet hook. You put your thumb on the thumb rest. And you put your front finger, your pointer finger, on the head of the shaft. And it just helps you kind of guide things along. And that is the knife method. The pencil method is self-explanatory as well. Just hold it like you're going to write something with a pencil. And in this method, you put the crochet hook over your palm and between the front two fingers here, let it rest on the front two fingers. Again, the thumb will be on the thumb rest. And people who like this method, just go right along holding it like this. And both those methods will work just fine. Just try them both and see which one you like. We also need to know how to hold our yarn. And you need to hold it so that you have some slight tension. You don't want this to be so tight, wrapped around fingers, that it's gonna be hard to pull through your fingers. But on the other hand, you don't want it to be so loose that it just slips with no tension whatsoever. So this is a way that I've found to make the tension just perfect for me. So we'll see if you like it. Put your palm up, holding the tail end of the yarn in your other hand. And spread your fingers a little and scoop that yarn up between your little finger and your ring finger. And you'll have, a, you know, six, eight inches laying on the, to the left of it or to the right if you're left-handed. Then you just simply take your palm and face your palm down. And now you take your pointer finger and scoop up 
yarn so that what we're looking at is yarn over the pointer finger, under the middle two fingers, and over the little finger. And when I'm ready to crochet then, I turn my hand perpendicular and that yarn will play out so nicely. Slight tension going over and under those fingers. It's not wrapped around any one finger, it's just sliding through fingers. And I find for me, this is the perfect amount of tension. But we have to have some way to get the yarn onto the hook. And to do this, we do a slip stitch. This is how I found to do the slip stitch. I lay the yarn over the palm of my hand. I bring the working end of the yarn. The yarn over the palm of my hand is the tail end. And you can tell this because it's cut. It's the tail end of whatever piece of yarn you're working with. And I bring the working end around. I go around three fingers. You can go around four fingers. It doesn't matter because I'm just trying to make a loop. And I make that loop and I just pinch the top, slip it right off my hands. And I have a loop and I have yarn still. My working end is still going toward the body of yarn, the ball of yarn or the clump of yarn I have here. And it hangs down behind that loop, behind that circle. And it intersects that circle. And I just take my crochet hook, slip it under that bisecting piece of yarn. I drop the whole thing and then pull down on the yarn and pull down even tighter on the work, work, working end of the yarn. And I have a, a slip knot. Now let me do that again because I got completely off camera. We don't want that. Okay. To do the slip knot, we start with the tail end of the yarn in the palm of our hand. And then we take the working end and we go around the fingers and pinch at the top and we just drop that off, still holding our pinch, so that we retain our loop. You can change hands, but we still have a loop. We still pinch the top. Now the working end of that yarn is hanging down below and it's bisected that loop that we made by going around our fingers. Now I'll take my crochet hook and I'll slip it under that bisecting yarn and just drop the whole bunch. This doesn't weigh hardly anything. It won't break or, or um, disassemble. And now I take both the tail end and the working end and I pull and that will make the loop and if you keep on pulling on the working end it tightens up that little loop and that becomes the loop that we work with on our um, for our project. So we have our slip knot. We know how we're going to hold our hook. Let's review really quickly how we hold the yarn. Palm up, slip under here so that we have it between our little finger and our ring finger. I just turn my hand over so that my palm is down. Now I take the pointer finger, slip it under that yarn, and I turn my hand perpendicular and I'm ready to crochet. And I just take then my tall finger and my thumb and I pinch that loop that's on my hook. And that helps with tension also. Uh, it helps keep the loop on my hook big enough so I can pull yarn through it. What we're aiming for is a sort of teardrop shape so that this hook can go in and out of that teardrop shape. And with your finger on that knot there, you can pull down a little bit and give yourself space. So the first stitch we're going to learn is the chain stitch. And the chain stitch is very simple, very basic. You'll have to have that to start almost anything you do. You take your, you have your hands in position, both the hook hand and the yarn hand. And I have my pinch down here holding the yarn in my teardrop shape. And I take the hook 
a little bit toward my body and then down back when I'm under the yarn and I can pull that up and now look what's happened. The yarn is hanging or stretched over the hook and we call that yarn over. You'll see that a lot and, and your pattern will say Y-O or yarn over. So we have the yarn over and now we're in a perfect position to just pull that crochet hook through the teardrop that you've already formed and that's your very first chain. So I move my hand now to get again the top of my work, the bottom of the loop on the hook and I'll do another chain because I want 33 chains. So I'll go down, back, up, I've formed a yarn over and now I'll pull that yarn over through my teardrop loop that I had on my hook. That's my second chain. So we'll just keep going down, back, up, pull through, down, back, up, pull through. That's four, five, six, seven, got 10 at this point. Let's review again. Down, back, up, pull through for 11. Down, back, up, pull through for 12. And we're going to keep on going till we get to 33. One, thirty-two, thirty-three. Now, if you noticed, at any time your ball of yarn gets in a funny spot or your clump of yarn, if you're using this, your scraps, you can just drop your yarn and go ahead and start over with the holding yarn. Scoop up, come through there turn and you're ready to go. Just takes a minute once you get used to that. Now let's look at what we've got here. We know we have 33 chains but do we really know what each stitch looks like? You'll need to know because you'll need to know where to go into the stitches. Sometimes our chain gets switched and you'll wonder where, where am I going in? So always turn your chain and keep it turned so that you can see V's. Now look at this. Every single stitch made a V. A V. A V. A V. These are the top of um, this chain stitch. Is that the whole thing of the chain stitch? It'll be what the top of any of your stitches looks like. It'll always be a V. And if you get lost, just kind of give it a tug flip it around a little bit till all those V's become obvious and then you'll you won't go wrong. So here I am I've got my 33 chains and now we're going to do a yarn over remember our yarn over down back up this will be the start of our star stitch so we have a yarn over and I'm gonna go to the second chain from my hook now I don't count the loop on the hook. That's not a stitch yet. That's just the loop on the hook. So here's one V, one stitch, and here's the second one. So I'm now, with my yarn over, I'm going to go down in to the middle of that stitch. And I'm just going to do yarn over and pull through. I'm not really doing a stitch yet. I'm just going to be pulling through yarn. Now I go into the next V, the next chain stitch. Oops, yes, I'm going to go now into the next chain. 
I'm going to do yarn over and pull through. And now I have four loops on my hook. I'm going to go into the next chain, yarn over, pull through. I have five. Wow, when does it end, huh? So I'm going to go through the next one, yarn over, pull through. I now have six loops on my hook. And now we make our stitch. We actually go yarn over, and I'm going to pull through every single one of those loops. And sometimes you just wiggle until it goes through. And I finish that off with a chain stitch. Now that's a little different than we'll do every one of the rest of them, but we had to get started, and so that's how we started it. So that's one of our star stitches. Now, from now on, we're going to do 14 more of these, and this is how we're going to do them. We insert this crochet hook into the last chain stitch we did. And this, let me take this out so I can kind of point, this is the last chain stitch. So I take my crochet hook and I just go in to that stitch and I yarn over and pull through. Now I have two. Now I'm going to go into the first leg of all these lovely starbursts, I guess you'd call them, the first leg of that star stitch. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through there. So I've got three. And then I'm going to go through the base of my previous star stitch. And it'll be the biggest hole there, you'll see. It'll be very easy to find, should be. And I'm going to go into that, yarn over, and pull through. So now I have four loops on my hook. But if you remember, I needed six. So I'm going to go into the next chain. I haven't touched that yet, but I'm going to go into the next unused chain, you might say. And I'll have five loops. And I'm going to go into the next one and pull up, and I'll have six loops. So now I yarn over and pull through all six, and I do a chain stitch. And now I have two. Now see how cute that is? It's a very cute stitch. So let's do that again. We're going to go into that chain stitch, yarn over, pull through. We're going to go through the first leg, yarn over, pull through. We're going to go through the base chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to go through the next two unused chains until we have six loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all six, and tie it up neatly with a chain stitch. We're just going to keep on doing that as we go down into the chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, into the first leg, yarn over, pull through, into the base chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, into the next unused chain, yarn over, pull through, into the next unused chain, yarn over, pull through, which leaves me with six loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through every one of those loops, and I'm going to finish that with a chain. Now keep on going until we get to the bottom. We should have 15 stars here.
Now, did you notice I was hesitant because I don't, I had let my chain twist and I had to make sure I was getting those V's so I can tell where to go. And now I've turned it the right way and I can see where the next stitch is going to be. And now I have six, and I haven't skipped any of those chains, thank goodness. Two chain stitches left which is perfect because we go into the chain stitch at the top pull through into the first leg pull through into the base chain stitch pull through and into these next two unused chain stitches and that makes six and we Pull all the way through and finish with a chain. Now we've finished our first row of these beautiful little star stitches. And we take the piece of work and we just turn it. We're going to single crochet into that last chain stitch the little eye of the star to single crochet. We go into this hole, we yarn over and pull through, and we pull through again. That's a single crochet. So right here, one of these legs of this star, we're going to single crochet in there as well. Pull through, yarn over and pull through again. So from now on, we're going to put two single crochets into each one of these little eyes that we see along the top of our piece. If you're having a hard time, just kind of pull your piece a little bit and they'll become very, very obvious. So let's go into the first eye we find. And we're going to single crochet and do another single crochet in that exact same eye. Move into the next eye. Single crochet and do one more single crochet. I'm repeating that all along. I find the next eye and I do two single crochets and remember single crochet we insert the hook into the stitch, and in this case it's the eye, push it through, we're going to yarn over, pull that back up so that we have two loops on our hook 
yarn over and pull through both of those loops at once. And that's my second single crochet in that eye. So let's go here and do two single crochets. Moving right along. You can see along the top, we're just making a lovely little edging to correspond with our chain stitch foundation, which had all the V's there, and now we have corresponding V's on this side. Find my next eye. Two single crochets. And here's my very last eye. And single crochet. Pretty good. Now I want to get this tail. I'm going to have a tail here. In fact, I have a perfect amount of yarn left. I want that tail to come out in the middle. So I'm just going to come over here and put my crochet hook where I want it. If, I, if it was a great distance, I would have to keep doing it in small increments, but it's the very next stitch. So I can just come into that stitch, yarn over, bring through, and don't do a stitch, just bring it right through that loop. And that, that's what's called a slip stitch. And let's see where that puts our, it puts it, a little bit off center, doesn't it? So let's just do that again. We'll move over one more and bring it through there. So there we have it in the right spot. Now I'm going to, at this point, I have a nice ending to my bookmark. I'm going to put my crochet, I'm sorry, my beads onto this crocheted bookmark. Just thread it on there. And I'll set that aside just for a second because now we're going to make a tassel. And I have a piece of cardboard here about three inches long. You can use other things. I found a toothpick box. It's about the right and I could have wrapped my yarn around there. But I have a piece of cardboard here and I'm going to wrap yarn around. It takes about a yard five times. There's a one, two, three, four, five. And I don't know if you can see that, but in the manufacturing process, the company felt like they needed to join. And I'm going to have a knot there. I don't want that knot there. I'm going to cut that off. 
in the grand scheme of things you're not using losing much yarn so I have a five on here to remind me to go around five times one two three four five and I just cut off my end and now I can come back to my piece I've just crocheted and I'm going to slip that long tail I have that have the beads on it the beads are pushed over toward the bookmark and I'm going to slip that under and I'm going to move this up I think I want about a three inch drop to where my tassel starts you can just use whatever is aesthetically pleasing for you um, I think three inches is good for me and I'm gonna make a double knot right there just like you tie your shoes just like you tie the top of the garbage bag whatever we'll just do just the plain old double knot nothing fancy and now let's take our tassel and snip the bottom and remove the cardboard so we have a tassel here and let's cut it off straight get rid of our excess and I'm going to move those beads down you might have to be a little forceful as you pull them down there you go just past the knot and then pull the next one just past the knot and the bulk of the tassel will keep them from falling off and the knot will keep them up there they're nice and firm so there's our tassel and our top of our bookmark but the end of our bookmark is a little ragged so I don't like the way this looks you could weave in this end and be done with it but I really don't like the way it looks so I'm going to get a uh, my crochet hook and I'm gonna pull this through and I'm gonna kind of join these ends and I'll just do this I'll just go in right here just force it in there I'm gonna grab that yarn and pull it through I could do it with the needle and perhaps I should have but there we go and that makes it a nice rounded you can see that the end is rounded just like this end is nice and rounded and now use your needle so this is like I say we could have used the needle for both for joining and for for this but that's okay and now we're going to be weaving in if you haven't woven anything in you always need to weave in the tail ends of this yarn because you don't want an ugly knot and you don't want this to come this is going to be handled all the time you don't want this to come loose and unravel so the rule of thumb is to as we weave in and out of some of these stitches we're going to go in three directions one two and three and then that's not that yarn's not going anywhere and it's just you just eye this and you just go from wherever you are now and you go you're weaving from stitch to stitch and you're going to go up at least an inch sometimes you get to a spot where you can move along among several stitches and you can go fast so okay so I went that direction now let's come back so I'm gonna skip one of those stitches so I don't pull it out and I'm gonna come back my dog has just wandered into the room so I hope she doesn't make noise she's a very sweet dog so she's not one to bark much 
and I've gone second direction, so I need to go one more direction, we'll turn it around, and we'll go back. And once I have this done, there is no way that, that yarn is slipping out. You can go, you know, if you feel more comfortable going further, burying it deeper, but the point is you don't want it to be seen but you want it buried and tight. And now I think I've done it enough. Back, forth, back, forth. And I cut it off and you can't even see where that is. And so here is my bookmark. It's gonna be very cute and I love it with a star stitch. So I want you to try this, you're gonna love this. And thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And in the description below, we'll have a place to sign up and get the written pattern. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Happy crocheting.